Williams. That's me. Some people like Froyo. That's not me. Some people can like both, and that's okay. I don't mind if you like both. Isn't that what we call compromise? Oh, excuse me. Do 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 it's a song that I just made up cause I was talking about ice cream poo doo doo cause I love ice cream so much boo doo doo boo doo doo boo doo doo INTERNET what's up internet how's it going it's Monday do you like my weird song about ice cream probably not but that's okay. Oh, we start the show off with somebody knocking on the door. Who's that out there? I'm going to guess it's a ghost. If I had to guess. If I had to wager a guest on a Monday knocking on the door, Drake Lack, it's probably. It's probably a ghost and it made the baby cry. <laughs> I can hear her back there. Oh, Olivia, sorry. All right, anyhow, what's up, everybody? Fish tankery, fish tankery nonsense. It's Monday. I'm getting warmed up. Getting this party started. Seeing how it's going. How's everybody's weekend go? Let's see. We got Swift Aquarium, Frank Dominguez, James Lyser, one, two, and three to the chat amongst a, a bunch of other people. Shout out to everybody. I'm seeing a lot of green names in the chat because people have been hitting that join button. They've been joining the the farmy, the family army, the farmy. Is that word? I don't know. It's probably somebody else has that patented or something. Uh, the the fish, fish tank army? Is that right? No, that's probably not right. Let's see. How many uh, members, how many channel memberships do we have now? Because we have an expectation coming up here in the future when we got to do a members only live stream. The maximum number we could have currently, 48. This is how many people will be in that in that? Unless we have more members join up. And there's a link for the people on the iPhone. Uh, apparently the iPhone, the little join button doesn't show up. So there it is in the chat. And it's always linked in the description down below if you're watching this later. Word. All right. Now that we've moved past the join button thing. Let's see. I think everybody joined during the show last week. But Gutsy, I think. I think Gutsy was after the show. So shout out to Gutsy, Smil Kapoor, Al... Janeco, Fish Girl from Connecticut, Terry's Tropical Tanks, It's Nature Man. Ooh, there's a whole bunch of you. Who was first? John Gilman was first to join the farmy. <laughs> it sounds like a, it'd be like fart army, <laughs> which is weird. That's just weird. Nobody would, nobody really wants to be a part of that army, you know? It smells bad. <laughs> Anyhow, did everybody have a nice weekend out there? We had a pretty reasonable weekend out here myself. Uh, spent Saturday out at ReefWorks. ReefWorks is a small convention, uh, mainly focusing on saltwater aquarium stuff. So, uh, But the lovely host uh, by Aquarium, uh, aquarium Co-op hosted a booth. So we were able to go up there and say howdy to some people. And I wanted to start the show off a little bit here talking about um, the differences of, like, if you run into me at the mall, right? Like, let's say let's say I was hanging out at the Tacoma Mall thinking about going to the REI. Is there an REI there? Oh, it's like across the street. Let's say I was hanging out at REI near the mall. And I was hanging around there. I am happy to say hi to people. It's like, hey, man, how you doing? That's great. But um, that's and that's fine. But I understand that some people are like, whoa, don't want to bug a guy when he's doing his normal stuff, which is fine. That's that's a good normal feeling to have. And obviously, if somebody's ha if, if you do recognize like somebody from the Internet or something and you're like, man, it's pretty clear that they're engrossed in doing something like talking to somebody or whatever, like 
hey, maybe wait or something. Uh, but I will. I do want to remind people that if I am literally at a fish event, I am at the fish event to meet you, to take selfies, that kind of stuff. Like, that's the whole reason I'm there. The whole reason, the only reason I go to those events and stuff is to meet fans and stuff in person that want to meet me in person. That's the whole reason I'm there. Um, so... I just want to make that clear that like, that's the reason I'm at those events. I don't sell anything. I don't have anything for sale. Uh, I don't have a booth where I'm trying to like, Hey, come buy my wares. You know, I'm not like selling pots and pans or something. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, that the whole reason I'm there is to meet people and stuff. So if anybody thinks it's awkward and maybe I'm already talking to somebody else, just hang behind the people that I'm talking to or wave or something and uh, get my attention. But that's the whole reason I'm there. So <clears throat> I just wanted to, I just wanted to make that known. I wanted to put it out there in the, into the zeitgeist, you know, so that people would know, um, like if I'm at aquatic experience or reef works or the, uh, aquatic gardeners association meeting convention thing, the AGA, that'll be the next one that I'm at. Um, they literally, um, there was a, what's the word? What's the word? Um, there's a Aquashella is coming up. I'm not going to Aquashella, um, because it's just going to cost too much money, honestly. Um, and I, I just, as much as I love meeting people and stuff like that, it's going to cost a lot of money. I have a, a burgeoning small family here with little Olivia and Vicky and that kind of stuff. So it's even more costly to leave now. Um, mainly because, um, you know, I have to have a sitter and, uh, you know, help Vicky out while she's gone and stuff like that. So it's, it's just going to be more costly to go to conventions and fly around and buy plane tickets and do all that kind of stuff. And, uh, I don't get a ton of, um, content for, you know, the YouTube channel or anything else, uh, when I go to those conventions and stuff. So I feel like if I'm going to take those kinds of trips, I'm going to be trying to go to specific places, get in, film for five or six hours, go out to dinner with some local people, stuff like that, get out of town. So um, one of, actually, uh, I was going to say that the Aquatic Gardeners Association is the next thing I'm going to. That's not true. The next thing I'm going to is the Willamette Valley Aquatic Society, Aquarium Society. I'm not sure what, what if the A is Aquatic Society or Aquarium Society uh, on the 16th of March down in Oregon. So I'm literally just going to get up super early that day, drive down there. Uh, I'm probably going to, I'm going to grab Aqua Pros. We're going to go. There's a shrimp thing during the day, which is awesome. There's going to be a cool shrimp thing during the day. So we're going to be there by Noon or three o'clock? I forget, but whatever. It's in my calendar. <laughs> I don't need to know it right now while I'm on the show. You know what I mean? So, but that's the 16th of March. There's going to be a shrimp meeting, and then at night there's going to be a fish club, a regular fish club meeting. Now that to me is really worth it because that's going to cost me gas money, that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to have to stay in a hotel. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm not going to have to stay in a hotel cause I'll probably just end up staying at Mike's house. Like I'll probably just go back there, sleep, get up and head back home early, uh, on Sunday. So that's a, that's a kind of a perfect example that like, well, I'm basically going to lose a day and I'm going to, um, you know, some gas money and stuff like that, but I'm basically just going to be going down there to film as much stuff, do a store tour, hopefully do a fish room tour, film with Mike, film with everybody around and, and then be able to come back. And then, you know, that, that really has a lot of value as far as like the community online here goes, because, um, as this last weekend was a perfect example, I think I probably talked to, you know, maybe like 50 or a hundred people somewhere in that range. There was a bunch of people, um, you know, which is awesome. It's totally cool to be able to do that. But um, we have more people than that right now watching live right now. You know, there's 118 people watching right now. Oh, yeah. Hit the like button, I guess. I don't know. Um, 
so we went, but so that's, that's my thought process of like, if I'm going to trade resources, how am I going to utilize those resources as best as possible? And unfortunately, like flying to Chicago or Dallas or New Jersey or any of that kind of stuff. And then, you know, spending three or four days on a vacation, you know, it's essentially a vacation because you don't really get much work done. Um, and it's, it's just not that in the books for me at this point. I've gone to Aquatic Experience multiple times, um, uh, Inner Zoo, a whole bunch of other ones and stuff like that. And so I think I'm kind of just dialing it back to go like, what's going to be more beneficial? And one of the perfect examples of it, what's more beneficial is went out to Minnesota last year, uh, got to tour a bunch of fish rooms, uh, got to drop a bunch of videos onto uh, YouTube to show people like, Oh, check out these, you know, check out all these cool fish rooms in Minnesota, you know, and obviously I didn't go to all of them, but we definitely whirlwind toured, went around to a lot of them, we were able to get out some, some information at the very least, like something that's entertaining to go like, oh, let's go to some places that don't have YouTube channels and stuff like that. They just happen to be avid, you know, fish breeders, um, and, uh, you know, shrimp breeders, you know, plant growers, all that kind of stuff, uh, and be able to check out some of these cool systems that are out there. And I, I think that's just going to be the bigger value moving forward. So that's more of the thing that I'm going to be focusing on. Aquamate says, we don't have many expos in Australia. There's not a whole lot of cities in Australia. <laughs> you know, I think there's like three major cities in Australia. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm just going from rough memory of a place that I've never been to. Um, you know, so it is fairly difficult for people to like kind of tour around down there. But I think, um, you know, I think if, if there's enough people in Australia or even New Zealand or, um, you know, you could probably get some people to come down from Papua New Guinea. Um, you know, there's there, there is a lot going on down in that part of the world. Um, and if you start to think about it, you know, a, a reasonable little expo type thing like this last weekend, I don't know how many tickets were sold, but I think there was like, I don't know, th between 500 and a thousand people showed up, came and went kind of deal. Um, and if you think like it could be organized like that, would just, it, that just doesn't even take that many people. So, um, yeah, Swift says there's 25 million people in Australia, so you really only need to get, you know, what's what's the number? How does I, I bet Swift can do the math on that? What's the percentage out of the 25 million people? If you need to only get a thousand people to come out, uh, you could probably start to organize something. You could probably start to organize some kind of thing. I think um, I do definitely want to. Um, I do definitely want to at some point in time go to Australia. Um, New Zealand and that kind of stuff. It's definitely on my, if I had a vision board in here, I would point at it. <laughs> uh, it's definitely on my list of places I want to go. Um, I definitely do want to try to go to Hong Kong this year. Um, going to see if that's going to work out. Uh, otherwise that kind of stuff just get, will just get pushed off till next year. But, um, you know what I mean? Uh, there's Joel Gillett. He's actually in New Zealand. Uh, I was actually talking to some people in New Zealand uh, about um, the possibility of coming out there and like, what is it? Uh, what does it all mean? You know what I mean? What does it all mean as far as um, if I was to come out there and film, what would it be like? And I do realize there would be a ton of cool content in New Zealand. And if there's a ton of cool content in New Zealand, there definitely is a ton of cool content in Australia because. Um, even if I went out to just film some of the, um, hydroponics and aquaponics systems that they have in, uh, Australia at this point, that would be more than enough content, uh, that people would lose their minds about because s some of the real cutting edge innovators for aquaponics are in Australia. The, uh, and I cannot remember the names of the actual doctors that are working on it. Um, there's some serious biologists out there that are trying to kind of figure out ways to make, or not to make, but to continue the Australian, um, 
economy. They're trying to continue the Australian economy to continue growing. It's been doing quite well, and so they're they're definitely finding some really cool, innovative ways uh, for farming and continued farming. Uh, and it's it, very interesting stuff. So I think even if I went to Australia and like went to a meet and greet, right, and then was able to go out and film uh, some of the aquaponics and hydroponics systems, I think that would make some fantastic. Uh, footage for YouTube and stuff because I think the most recent stuff that I've seen uh, on that stuff was like f- five or six years old. So I, I do have to imagine there's got to be some amazing, cool uh, innovations going on out there in just regards to that stuff. Um, so, you know, um, I, I think that all there's plenty of stuff to do if I'm going to a place that, um, you know, has a viable thing to document, you know. I am going to try to go to um, Florida this year. I'm also trying to figure out how to do a two-day, you know, land in the morning, spend a whole day, fly out the next morning, uh, Arizona trip for uh, some filming and stuff and also some some other trips this, this year. So th- there will be plenty of stuff going on. So, you know, it'll be good. Jessica Thiegardner says it's been uh, downpouring downpouring in Grants Pass, and now it's snowing. Good day to get more shrimp and play with the tanks. Yeah, no, it is a good time. you got to stay out of that snow. If it's been pouring down rain and snowing, it's just nonsense. Eurabeth just made it. Thanks for showing up. Good to see you. Uh, Let me scroll through the chat here and see if we got anything... Mm-mm. Let's see if we got uh, any questions. Mostly people just saying hit that like button, which, hey, you know, apparently that's important. Uh, Swamp Tao got distracted taking pictures, juggling my wife and her best friend, and being shy. I'll say hi at the AGA for sure. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Swamp Tao was at uh, the, what was it called? Reefworks. <laughs> it's, hard. it's a hard name to remember. I don't know why. Uh, but I did talk to something that was funny is that, um, something that was funny was the, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oh, I, I talked to one of the sump builders again. Uh, one of the, the, the guys who's building sumps and, um, he was like, he was like, yeah, when are we going to do a freshwater sump? And I'm like, I don't know. When are we going to do a freshwater sump? And he's like, as soon as you design one. And I'm like, oh, I have to design one? <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to add that to my list of a million things to get going. So um, I think that that would be interesting. I don't know. I guess you guys let me know if um, – would there, would anybody out there even have interest in a prefabricated freshwater sump? Is that something that you all would be interested in? If it is – Put it in the comments. It's, if you throw it into the chat, it just kind of goes off into the ether. Um, but uh, we do have a super chat here, I have to mention. From Rumbust, 17.49 Swedish Crones. Thanks, my guy. Definitely um, appreciate it. Um uh, Dom is asking, have an unrelated question for you guys. Currently wanting to dip my toes in Sump World for freshwater. Oh, wow. That's weird. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess somebody like Dom might be interested if the price was right. Uh, Do you have any books, websites for reference looking for pipe diameter and gallons per hour needed? Um, If you're going with a basic siphon, a one-inch siphon is plenty. Uh, I normally do... uh, A one-inch siphon. One-inch siphon will pull a lot of water, so it doesn't even really matter what kind of pump you have. Um, And typically, the turnover rate in a pump, I will normally just take the amount of gallons of an aquarium and add a zero to it, and then I want that many gallons per hour from a pump. Super easy. Uh, And then the emergency drain, I'll normally do in a uh, one-and-a-half-inch pipe. So the siphon that's constantly drawing water, one inch pipe, uh, the emergency drain, one and a half inch. So uh, pretty simple. The, and then the return line from the pump to the tank, one inch just for, 
use the same use the same plumbing. There's no reason to not. Um, because uh, nowadays I just use DC pumps that are uh, you can turn them up and turn them down. Easy money it makes it just way simple. Um, utilizing DC pumps, they're quieter. They use less electricity, and, um, and you know they're, they're just overall a better pump to to return water. I mean, and I mean, even to the point where a lot of people are even using you know DC pumps in the sump in their basement uh, in order to to pull out rainwater and stuff like that because they just really are uh, a much better solution. Um, one thing that does confuse people the first time you ever use a DC pump is that it takes time for it to spin up. Um, it doesn't turn on like crazy fast, like an AC pump does, uh, and like, and then gets going. Um, and that almost always inspires people to email somebody and say that it's broken. <laughs> and they're like, did you wait for it to get going all the way? And they're like, no. Like, okay, go turn it back on and, and give it 30 seconds and let it get going. You know, I like one of the pumps I have takes like 45 seconds to get up to speed. Maybe, you know, maybe even a minute. But if you're sitting there staring at it and it's just like the water's not even coming out yet, it hasn't even gotten going, it feels like. It feels like you've been staring at it for an eternity because you're like, oh, no, this thing is broken. And then after 15 seconds, you know, people unplug it and they're like, well, it's broken. Because <laughs> you're so used to the AC pumps that just go blasting out right out the gate. Uh, we got super chat from Jason LaFaver. A $5 super chat says, Bill designed the sump. Yeah, I would... Um, you know, I, I would love to actually just be building sumps and stuff all the time. Um, the unfortunate thing is, is that it's uh, I, I've not found it to be lucrative for myself, but um, I can't remember the name of the company. Is it Crystal Reef? Is it Crystal Reef Fabrications or whatnot? Uh, I don't I can't remember the name. I'll, I'll look them up, you know, uh, but they, they build stuff and. And uh, they have all the equipment and the big CNC machines and all that kind of stuff. And, and so they have the ability to do it. It's just, you know, even for me to, like, get into a warehouse space, I uh, I don't even think I could get into a warehouse space at this point. Just how cost prohibitive it is. It's, it's pretty darn expensive. So um, let alone buying the equipment and stuff like that. And... Uh, I, I've been freaking out about whether or not I'm going to order a new camera. So that it, hopefully that gives you an idea of how much it would cost <laughs> to rent a warehouse around here. Uh, it's pretty expensive. I think I think we're up to like two dollars a square foot. So if you think about it in those terms, it's like a thousand square foot space, which really isn't that big. Um, it really isn't that big when you get down to you know. A building space just because um just because of how much um you know storage space and all that kind of stuff you know it's a 20 by 50 is a thousand square feet and that's like two grand a month that's a pretty big note to be um making that payment you know making that payment trying to pay an employee or anything like that i'm still trying to find i'm still trying to get this show funded enough that we'll be able to get an employee someday so i don't know but I would love to be able to do that and maybe uh, working with Julian from uh, as a uh, Bentley verified it's it's Crystal Reef. Um, you know, maybe working with Julian on that stuff would be a good gateway for them to actually get made and you guys actually be able to order them and that kind of stuff because they do the shipping. They do all that stuff. So that's that might be cool. Uh, I'm also am going to uh, talk to Jason from clear fabrications and see if he maybe wants to um, maybe collaborate on building one or something like that. And maybe we could, um, you know, maybe, maybe we, maybe he and I could build one over the weekend or something like that. And, uh, and we could just make it into like kind of a promo thing for his business or, or something. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Like, so I got like a couple prospects of whether or not uh, we're going to be able to, you know, do something, you know, but uh, the reason I'm talking about putting a sump on it and that kind of stuff, um, 
is uh, because of today's topic. And, and today's topic is kind of loosey-goosey, and I wasn't 100% sure how I was supposed to title it. Um, I don't know if anybody else that has a YouTube channel out there. It is like mind-bending how you can accidentally title a video, and it um, instead of it getting be between 1,600 and 2,000 views like it normally does, suddenly it'll drop down to... Um, actually, let me check this out. Hold on. Um, if I go over to video manager, so from last week, like here's a perfect example, like, uh, Friday's show. So Friday's show, which typically gets, uh, you know, 1800 to 2200 views, sometimes 1600 views, stuff like that. Like I've titled stuff and in inappropriately, like I, I, there's no swears or anything wrong like that, but I just title them wrong on accident and then they drop down and get like 900 views. <laughs> so it's super weird. Um, but anyhow, we'll see if today's title was any good. <laughs> uh, but the ecosystems and aquarium breeding, I think, um, th this is where it really comes in. And I, this is where, like, I think the Achilles heel that most people have is that they don't build, um, a sump system for their breeding. Uh, and you know, most breeders out there are typically using, uh, sponge filters and those have a lot of advantages and small tanks and those have a lot of advantages and things. Uh, but I think the, the most successful person that's doing stuff at their house and have a breeding program with a tank that they're enjoying is basically what I do. That's kind of what I do. So I breed the shrimp, um, you know, breeding the bristlenose plecos. Um, um, the pistogrammas are, are are breeding in there, but I don't think their babies are, are making it because I uh, haven't seen that. But, you know, breeding the killifish, breeding the guppies, which at some point in time they better breed or I'm going to lose my mind. But I'm generally like breeding most of the stuff that I have. But I'm breeding them into you know, existing systems, the ecosystems that are, that are already surviving and thriving in order to make it more like a natural environment for those fish. Now, this isn't, uh, I'm not, this isn't shots fired at anybody who has a bunch of little breeding tanks and stuff like that. That stuff's great. If you, if you want to have an intense breeding program, that's pretty much what you need to do. Um, you, you need to do that. You need to set up all those 10 gallon tanks and, and just have a ton of them all over the place. If that's how you want to breed. Um, I like to breed. Um, I, I like to breed in, in the fact that I have a tank that is not only aesthetically pleasing, but it's also pleasing for me to, you know, maintain it and be around it. And breeding systems where there's just a whole bunch of little tanks, those just aren't for me. That's just not for me because um, I look at those and I'm just like, oh, that's a lot of work. Like, I've got to do all these water changes. I should probably automate this system, that kind of stuff. And, you know, one of the one of the things that kind of inspired what today's kind of topic was about and stuff is, you know, talking with Dean and Bentley over the weekend. Like, both of those guys have those really... I consider them to be cool systems and I think there's nothing wrong with them, but they have those cool systems set up for breeding that that's the way that they want to do it. And I, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic to me. I would probably lose my mind if I have a tank that doesn't have the aesthetic natural feel to it. I really either I start to lose interest or Maybe, yeah, I mean, I guess it's the same thing if I say I stop caring about it, but uh, I definitely start to lose interest and it's not something that I want to work on and I don't get as excited or enthusiastic about it. Whereas even the, you know, the 240 right now needs a ton of work. Uh, uh, it just really does. I'm kind of at that point where I've started tearing things up and moving stuff around and uh, getting things going. But e even with that, you know, that is still... I'm still at least enthusiastic about that, right? Like I'm still enthusiastic about getting that work done and moving forward on that system. But I guess I forgot to go to the video. So hold on, let me hold on to my hold let me hold on to my thought process here. And before we go to the video, um I just want to give a shout out to all of the Patreonizers out there. If you guys haven't been over to the Patreon, please 
It's just a, it's just an old click of the wrist, right? You just click your wrist. You can go over there and uh, here's the link right here. It is uh, www.patreon.com forward slash Joel underscore C. Pretty simple. Even if you don't have the, the link, if you go to Patreon, you can look up Joel, J-O-E-L underscore C. You'll be able to find me on there. Um, big shout out to all the 292 Patreons, uh, patrons over there who have be definitely been supporting the show and stuff like that. We have a, a bit of a thriving or a burgeoning thriving community over there where we have people post and stuff like that. And we typically talk about those posts on Friday. And there is a candid shot of me from, uh, Reforks on Saturday <laughs> up on there. And, um, you know, we have a we have a bit of a community going on over there. We have some pretty cool posts, especially right now. Some pretty cool photos and people talking about their projects and stuff, which is cool. Um, Grassy Peak posted something on there that I would highly recommend anybody anybody to go check out. I don't know if it's I wonder if that's Patreon only. I don't know. I don't know if you can you can check out the community or not if you aren't a Patreon, but I highly recommend it. It's starting to grow. It's doing quite well, and that's how we're able to even do the whole ding dang show anyhow. So uh, I highly recommend anybody check that out, and I definitely appreciate anybody who is uh, over there helping out, contributing, and uh, doing the whole thing. Why doesn't this this thing always does that? Remember playback position. I want it to start at the beginning. Here we go. And then, I don't know. How does this look? I'm going to take this down a little bit. Oh, yeah, there we go. That looks better. Anyhow, so obviously today's topic kind of got into it for a second there. I just want to show you guys and give you an example. This video right here is of my 150-gallon aquarium, a breed shrimp. I've got a pair of guppies in here, which will probably make an appearance swimming by at some point in time. But I'm growing plants, I'm propagating plants, I'm breeding shrimp, and this is a perfect system that sort of illustrates my, it's not necessarily my theory, but it's my practice, you know what I mean? It's not even, it's not even really just, it's not even really an idea at this point, it's basically how I do it. Um, th this is how I go about it, this is um, how I get things done, and... I think I'm, I think I'm pretty much always just going to continue this same pattern and whether or not pattern is the right word. I don't know if pattern is the right word, but I think I'm pretty much just going to keep, um, setting up my tanks this way, running my, running my systems this way as an ecosystem, as much as I can. Um, it, uh, it really is the way that I like to run it. It's the way that I think is ultimately, um, it's ultimately the best way to maintain a healthy system. And especially, um, one of the big sides that I have here is that everything that I breed or raise or plants that I grow or any of that kind of stuff, they are adapted to a pretty specific local water quality and stuff like that, right? Um, I'm I'm not overreaching my water, um, which I I find I see a lot of people kind of overreaching their local water fairly often, and you know that can be problematic because you know if you're like in Oklahoma and you're trying to grow uh, super soft water stuff, you're gonna end up to be getting into a lot of um, you know, you're going to be getting into a lot of, um, you know, water filtration concerns and, you know, having to purify water ahead of time. There's going to be a lot of issues that you're going to have to deal with. And I don't think promoting that is bad. I don't think that it's bad, but I think promoting it to the wrong group of people can be pretty detrimental. Um, you know, I, I think it would be, you know, if you like, let's say you end up selling some fish or something that are like, yeah, these are locally raised, and that's not untrue. That is true, right? Um, you could you could accidentally run into passing something on to somebody that uh, is maybe not prepared to do 
you know, something maybe that's that advanced or whatnot. That's one of the few issues that I've run into <coughs> as far as, you know, local breeding from time to time may or may not cause a conflict like that, which, you know, a lot of people are kind of desperate to sell their stuff at times. And I get it. I get that's how, um, you could really get into that position. But I think, uh, I think overreaching your water as far as a breeding program goes is probably not a great idea. <laughs> like I almost, if, if I wanted to do Caradina shrimp, I would almost move from the Midwest if, especially if I was going to be breeding them, you know what I mean? Um, I think I would almost move from somewhere so that I could get to somewhere where I just literally had the right water uh, to regularly do that. Does this camera have a flash? Hold on a second. I just looked over here. Oh. This camera's actually even on. Oh, it does. <laughs> Sorry. Totally distracted by stuff on my desk. I forgot that this camera has a flash. <laughs> I feel, this thing feels like that must be like 1982 technology, right? Hopefully that camera will be sold soon because I need uh, whew. I keep stressing out about getting a new camera. And every time I talk to Corey about it, he's like, man, you don't need a new camera. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Probably because Corey's Corey, you know, he just likes to tell me like, no. Ugh. Hold on. My phone's going off. Can't be about my daughter because. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm like, my daughter's here. I can't be about her. And I don't hear her crying, so it must be fine. Okay, anyhow, getting back into the uh, the topic here at hand. Sorry, I got distracted like a like I got ADHD or something. I'm not sure. Like a squirrel went running by. Anyhow, um, so I don't know. I kind of rambled off and got a little bit weird there for a second. But hopefully people can kind of understand what I'm talking about. Like one of the big things that I enjoy is that Almost all of the plants that I grow are not hard-ish water plants. Almost every plant that I grow is a soft water plant to a degree, or at least one that can pretty readily adapt to softer waters. Like, I don't super overreach, um, you know, my plant parameters. I don't super overreach my shrimp, my fish, any of that kind of stuff, because uh, I definitely don't want to have more tanks in my system. Like, I do have my little reef tank, right? I don't want to overreach more tanks in my system that need more filtering in order to just do a simple water change, right? Um, that's going to be the reality, right? And and that's a big reason that I stick to that is because I don't want to make doing a water change a crazy situation. Uh, I definitely don't want to make it a crazy situation, and I certainly don't want to make it a life or death situation if... For instance, like, let's say my carbon block completely wore out, right? And I didn't really realize it because I got super used to uh, the carbon block just being in good shape, right? And then I do water change on a bunch of tanks and don't realize that I put a bunch of, like, nasty water in the tank, you know? Like, I, I definitely want to stay away from that. And I definitely want to stay away from, you know, dependence on things like, uh, RODI filters, like you guys know that I do filter some of my water, but I definitely, um, I definitely don't want to, um, I definitely don't want to continue buying filtration stuff forever. You know what I mean? Um, oh my gosh, is this an opportunity to talk about cameras? <laughs> Jamie Oliver, do, 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 do. where did it go? Did Jamie Oliver was asking something about cameras? Do, 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 do. I don't see the initial question, but I see people responding. And Jamie Oliver says, I have Canon L lenses, but use my X-T3 now. Um, yeah, I currently use a 6D Mark II as my main camera. Uh, I have a 50D. And uh, I have an 80D that I'm gonna be I'm selling actually to a friend. So, um, but the the 
two cameras I'm, I'm trying to consider between right now is the C100 Mark II, whether or not I want to save up for a C200 at some point in time, um, or the EOS R, the new R that has come out, uh, seems to be right in there. Or if I'm just going to buy some new lenses, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I realistically like the EOS R seems to kind of be kind of the most likely candidate at this point. I think the C100 Mark II would be great, uh, but I'd be kind of stuck with no upgrade path to, you know, going to 4K or anything like that. But we shall see. It's a, it's a lot of money, so I'm sort of just losing my mind trying to figure it out. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I know it's a, not a lot of money to some people, but it's a lot of money to me. Um, I don't make a ton of money, but, uh, you know, the C200 is exceptionally a lot of money. It's about 7,500 bucks. Um, so that's a lot. My car only costs two grand. <laughs> uh, you know, so if anybody thinks I'm like super baller rich or something like that, I'm definitely not. <laughs> Um, Jared Byer says all of the Oscar nominated documentaries this year were shot on Canon cameras. Most of them on the C300. I think they're, most of them were saw, shot on the C300 Mark II, which is decidedly different camera. Um, I doubt that most of the documentaries were shot on the regular old C300 because the C300 is all manual focus. Uh, so it would be weird that people would be shooting like run and gun documentaries with manual focus camera. So it's probably the C300 Mark II, which honestly I would be really intrigued to own a C300 Mark II. Um, but how much are they right now? 300 Mark II. So, um, anybody that's wondering C300 Mark II right now is 10 grand um oh there's a used one that is 7500 which probably means it oh no no that's a pl mount sorry i will never get a pl mount camera <laughs> so just a just a little side tangent here pl mount is oh, I can't remember what it stands for uh but it's like cinema glass and I don't have I'm not even the owner of any how am I trying to remember what the PL mount is I can't remember what it means I uh, forget let's just click on this and we'll see what it says boing PL is a lens mount developed by Ari a R R I, which is one of the most expensive cameras in the world, uh, for use with both 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter movie cameras. PL stands for positive lock. That's what it is. I couldn't remember what it was. I thought it was like professional line or something like that, but I don't want to be wrong. Yeah. It's the airy one. So, and there's no way I'll ever do that. So look at this, the airy, uh, 18 to 35, which is a T2 lens and Zero autofocus, you guys. That means everything is manual. The zoom is manual. The focus is manual. The aperture is manual. Everything is manual on this lens. The Sigma version that goes onto the PL mount for the Airy camera, the 18 to 35 millimeter is four grand used. <laughs> That's just one lens. <laughs> which is a shocking amount of money. Although I was looking at $1,500 lenses earlier, so it's not that bad. But uh, I've regularly seen airy lenses that are $30,000, $25,000, 20000 $20,000. They're, they're very expensive. And uh, let me see if, um, what's the current, let me see. So there's like, the Aerie Alexa, which is an amazingly cool camera, um, but it's extremely difficult to use. So, I mean, it would it would probably take it would probably take me like three months to get familiar with it. Realistically, I mean, I could probably use it in those three months, but well, where is it for sale? Let's see, shopping. 
Let's see. What's the so the area Alexa is their standard one. <laughs> Here's one of their lights. One of the Arimax uh, lights is forty five thousand um, dollars. The wooden camera handle is fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, where's the actual camera? They don't even have the camera for sale because people will probably die of sticker shock. Airy. Let's see. Airy Alexa. Here we go. Shopping. Let's go over here. Uh, da, 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 da. There's a Red Raven, which I would not mind the Red Raven, but that one's 15 grand. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Oh man, the map box for the area Alexa used is $5,500. I can't even find one online for sale. Let me see if I can find one. I can't even find one online. Oh, there's a, a, a airy lens refurbished. It's an anamorphic. It's a weird lens, but that one's $90,000. <laughs> Crazy stuff, right? So when I talk about me probably spending 3500 bucks on a camera that's that's what i mean right there is that like some people are like yeah just go get it just go get the really good one um so i i would love a c300 mark ii but i i cannot afford that camera i just cannot i don't even have the credit limit to even buy that so i don't even think i could do it ollie simmons with a five dollar super chat says Say I couldn't run a sump on my reef tank. Would you run a hang on the back filter or a canister filter? Can you recommend either? Um, if I couldn't run a sump on a reef tank, um, I don't know that I would run a hang on the back or a canister. Man, I would want to do one of the all-in-one tanks that has the refugium kind of sump area built into the back of the tank that's the one this, that i've done in the past um and those are actually pretty easy to build yourself out of um some chunky like just old acrylic chunks so i would definitely do that um before i would do either a hang on the back or a canister filter canister filter on um Reef tanks has a real tendency to become a serious problem long term because of the uh, you can really just get a ton of ammonia and things being pumped out of that uh, because of the uh, essentially the water chemistry from salt water to water or uh, uh, full fresh water is just considerably different. And um, the canister itself uh, will basically just trap a bunch of detritus and stuff that will end up breaking down in there and you'll really have a problem. So if I had to choose between the two, I would say hang on back is probably better mainly because you can see in there, you'll know what's going on. Um, it's much easier to track, you know, which macro algaes and stuff like that, that you probably have growing in there. Uh, it'll really, um, that would be, really would be the better way to go. Um, you know, I, think canister filters are good if you have a, a the right situational setup for them. Um, I don't think any tank over... I don't think any tank over, let's say, a 40 breeder should really be running a canister, though, personally. And one of the big reasons for that is, you know, the title of this video, um, the ecosystem that you're building is just too small. Um, it's just too small. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that argue with what I'm saying and whatnot, but, um, with how closed off that system is, there really isn't a lot of oxygen in there. Um, the most, more often than not, the best things that people can run in there is like a UV sterilizer, which is just continually like just blasting things out of the water. And it's not really, it's not really promoting an ecosystem in its own right. Um, when it's really not that difficult to promote an ecosystem uh, in a much more natural way than uh, a canister filter. Now, I'm not trying to vilify canister filters or that, it, and I'm also not trying to say that it is impossible to run big systems uh, on a canister filter. I just think you, you really get priced out at that 40 gallon tank mark, right? 
Because you get up to a 55, you get up to a 75 or something like that, you're going to have to go buy like an FX6. And I'm not sure how much FX6s are now, so let's take a look and see how much the, that is right at the moment. FX6 filter. So let's just keep this super simple. We'll just look up an FX6 filter. That's $400 right now. Big Al's, Petco, um, PetSmart. Uh, you get an FX4 off Amazon for $279. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that's the best canister filter in the world or anything like that, but um, it's definitely one of the good ones, and most people would kind of hang their hat on how well they work. Um, but they are pretty expensive, and I really think at that $400, uh, that $400 mark right around there, you're going to get so much more benefits from you know, even just buying an old tank, plumbing it in and just running it that way. Um, I, I think, you know, you have enough budget there to get out of the canister filter game versus, you know, buying something like an FX6 and, you know, and going that route, you know, because you could probably find an old, even an old acrylic tank. You could find like an old you know, 50 gallon acrylic tank, drill some holes in it and plumb some pipes into it. And that would even just be better than a canister filter and put the, put the bio media from the canister filter in there, <laughs> you know, because you're just looking at so much more water volume, uh, so much more oxygenation in order to keep things going. Well, the things that you can change, uh, how much simpler it is to actually monitor what's going on. Uh, one of the big downsides to canister filters is, is that you don't know what's going on in there, <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, you know, one of the upsides to my open air sump systems. It's more of an ecosystem. Um, I can always just walk over and look and see how many plants are growing in there or how the plants are growing in the sump. Um, and it'll generally give me a really good idea of what's happening in the tank. Um, and a lot of that is from experience. Sure. But assuming that you don't drop off the face of the earth and die or die tomorrow or something like that, you are going to accrue some of that experience yourself over time working with a system. You're going to be learning and gathering all of this information over time. Um, I did post onto my community tab. Um, I did post onto my community tab just a little while ago. Um, uh, maybe yesterday, even I posted like a five, six year old video, um, on there. There was one that I did with, um, uh, Marine Depot or something like that. I think it was Marine Depot. I'm not sure, uh, but I did post that under the community tab and it just gives you an idea. Like over four, five, six years, you can really start to accrue a lot of information, uh, working with your system, learning new things and just the evolution of stuff. But, uh, it does feel like sometimes like it's taking forever and it's going to take too long, except for, you know, the reality is it eventually kind of blows by a little bit. Um, and considering, even if you're talking about something like a short, like a six month period, you know, three month period, you see a lot of changes and stuff like that uh, over just a short period of time. And you start, um, you know, going that, you know, different directions and, and really just kind of focusing on, you know, maintaining parts of the ecosystem and, and creating it as a whole instead of, um, uh, you know, like just I'm going to slap a canister filter on. It's going to be good. We've got a uh, two pound super chat from Ollie Simmons. Says my tank is only 25 gallons, just a few corals. Okay. Yeah, I think um, what I would do, Ollie, if I had like a 25 gallon reef, something like that, I would probably go the, I would probably just get an Aqua Clear like 110 or an Aqua Clear 70 or something like that. And I would build um, my own refugium on the back. And that's it. That's all I would do as far as filtration goes on, on that size of a tank. I would maybe get a hang on the back skimmer. Um, but those two pieces are enough um, to do what you need to do. So you basically need to get an AquaClear filter. And you're going to basically just take the biomedia and the sponge and all that crap out of it. You get an AquaClear. And then you're just going to need to get a little tiny... Freshwater LED light. Um, the aquarium co-op sells the nano light, the nano fluval light. That is the specific 
uh, light that I'm using on my reef tank refugium right now. As uh, most of the things that you grow in the refugium of your saltwater tank are going to use the same spectrum of light that most freshwater plants are utilizing. So that's a really interesting thing because they're just so much closer to the surface of the water. The light that's typically growing those algaes is very similar to the light that is growing terrestrial plants and freshwater plants and stuff like that. So you can actually use a freshwater light on this. And then just to hang on back, skimmer is going to be pretty basic kind of deal. Um, so you have a little tiny skimmer on there and then just use a regular freshwater hang on back filter, run that as a refugium with a little light on it that turns on opposite your daylight, you know, opposite your daylight timer and, um, and boom, you'll be in business. That's all you really need for a nano reef tank. You don't need a ton of filtration. The live rock is all of your biomedia in a reef tank. That's one thing that, uh, I think a lot of freshwater people are like, I don't understand what's with all this rock. So the rock in a reef system is just as porous as like the biomedia that you get in a freshwater tank. It's super porous like that. So there's a ton of bacteria growing in it. Um, so the, basically all of the hardscape in a reef is biological filter me media, basically. It's just really porous rock that has a ton of uh, bacteria and stuff growing in all of it. Oh yeah, who do we got here? Uh, Mellow Moogle says, interested in purchasing, purchasing supplies from the aquarium co-op and showing your support for Joel? Use this link. Well, there's a link right there. As you guys, uh, you might be new to the show. Maybe you don't know. I don't know. Aquarium co-op is our affiliate sponsor. So how that works is, is, um, you know, you basically go through our link. If you're going to go buy stuff at the aquarium co-op, or if you want to, um, go buy some of the products that I use from the aquarium co-op, um, the reason that he's that he's the affiliate sponsor of the show is a he's my friend b we work together c i trust in that business um, not only their customer service all that stuff but the products are tested and and that kind of stuff he just doesn't even carry stuff if it's not good so i really trust that and his plants are pretty much top notch you're not really going to find anything that's um, going to be an easy transition for anybody that's new to freshwater plants and stuff like that. You really aren't going to find that. That's one of those things, you know, Corey really focuses on making any, you know, opening the door for anybody who wants to start growing plants. That's the thing. You know, I know a lot of, uh, really experienced guys out there are like, man, his plant list isn't very long. I'm looking for something that was grown on Mars, right? Well, he doesn't carry that kind of stuff because that's he's he's the guy who's focusing on the beginner and the intermediate people and getting you guys all the tested stuff and everything that that uh, can really help you make a transition from having a rock only tank and growing some plants in it and making it into an ecosystem. Uh, that's really his focus and stuff. And so that's why I always recommend it. You know, I use his, I use the fertilizer from uh, aquarium co-op and the iron supplement and stuff like that. It works fantastically. Um, and that's one of the reasons it's easy green and easy iron. The it's, I know what the formula is and it's the same stuff that I would have mixed on my own. If I'd bought dry fertilizer and stuff like that, it's what I would have mixed anyhow. So, you know, that if that gives you an idea of what Easy Green is, it's the same fertilizer that I would have made. It's just in a bottle. It's stable. It's measured out. It's super easy to use. And I use it all, every single plant in here in this video is feeding off of Easy Green and Easy Iron. That's it. Super easy. So, uh, him, them being an affiliate sponsor is basically like, Hey, if you guys want to buy something through the link, you can, you don't have to, it's not a weird hard sell or anything like that. But just to let you guys know, that's like, you know, that's what's up. Um, but you know, if you are buying easy green, I highly recommend buying the giant, giant bottle and just reusing, uh, the pump head. Uh oh, Cheshire Cat, she forgot to use it my li uh, use the link when you ordered. <laughs> that does happen from time to time, and I did see your comment uh, on that video, and I was like, oh man, she didn't use the affiliate link. I don't know if I want to bring it up or not. <laughs> and uh, I haven't, I haven't 
done my sit down yet to answer all of the comments from last week. So I guess I'll know what to comment now. I'll know what to comment, but don't worry about that. I, you know, nobody needs to feel bad. Um, you just, you can hit the join button or the Patreon or any of that kind of stuff. And don't worry, we cool. Uh, one of the reasons I tell people like you could go to Patreon is cause you could just be like a dollar a month. If that's what you wanted to be. If you want to be in the dollar a month club, that's more support than YouTube would ever pay out <laughs> in a month <laughs> from one person watching. You could watch my channel all month long, the whole entire time, and it's still the ad revenue would never even equal um, a dollar. You know, this is not how the it's not how the thing works. So, just mad props to all the people out there that are willing to um, be a dollar or five bucks or ten bucks a month. I, I really appreciate it. And to anybody who was a patronizer, I appreciate it. Any of you know, future patronizers, I definitely appreciate it. You know what I mean? Uh, Dom's got to go. Have a good evening. All right, you too. Christine Kaiser says, uh, Coop's, got, Coop's plants are the best. Never had one die off. Yeah, uh, me neither. They just grow. One of the big things, he converts them. He converts them from the emergent form uh, that you normally get them from the farms as much as he can. I don't think he always does, but um, I think... 99 90% of the time or something like that. I think sometimes they get these giant orders and and uh, get overwhelmed and then people like are like, "No, nah, just send it." And they're like, ah, "I guess I do." Do 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 do. Trying to see if I can find anything Back here in the chat, sometimes I get to talking and it's hard to read the chat. Um, Full Moon Aquatics has ever, ever tried spotlights on substrate, substrate to keep plants from getting leggy. Um, that will work to a certain degree, um, but I wouldn't count on it. I certainly wouldn't count um, on that. Yes, some more specific intense lighting will um you know, essentially make some plants more compact. Uh, it will make them more compact and grow because they aren't necessarily reaching for the light. Uh, but I find trimming and maintenance much easier uh, in order to uh, stop them from growing upward. Uh, like this plant, hold on a second, let me get, oh man, the fans of the arrows are going to be stoked because I'm going to have to get out the arrow. Hold on, we're, come on video, let's go. And we'll pause it right there. Okay. Uh, let me find my arrow. Boing. Yes. The red arrow today. And you guys are in for a treat. The old red arrow. I'm going to find the layout. Yeah. Let's see if we can't rotate it. Oh, no. We can't rotate it that slowly. That's ridiculous. Oh, man. It looks like there's a little bit of hair algae mixed in here right now. That's terrible. You should definitely listen... To my advice because I have hair algae in my styrogyne, which happens quite a bit. So the styrogyne right here, styrogyne repens, right? One of our favorite little plants around. So see how this one right here, right? This plant right here is getting much taller. And yet I have all these over here that are growing towards the base. This is just kind of a perfect example of the styrogyne will reach. It'll go up. It'll do that. But I'm going to go down here and I'm going to trim this off right down at the base down here. Maybe a centimeter above the substrate. Maybe two centimeters. Just kind of depends on how this one's growing. Uh, I'm just going to look for that good spot where we got this one growing up, up into the... It's reaching up. It's reaching up and growing up. We're going to trim it right there. Then the side shoots that are going to come out, as long as there's a good enough light here, and will typically grow more lateral along the substrate and stay more compact towards you know instead of reaching up and getting super tall that's one of the biggest tricks that i could recommend to anybody and i would definitely say the same thing with oh where's that here we go and hit play here okay uh and i would say the same thing with this plant right here and then I got to grab control of the arrow. So this pogostemon right here, this is actually pogostemon also, but this is erectus instead of 
uh, Stellatus. It's basically a different kind, uh, just a different varietal. But it is also a Pogostemon. You can see here, it's kind of reaching up up here and going much taller. But the new shoots down here are growing way tighter together and more compact. Over time, with the trimming and stuff like that, the same thing will happen with this plant here is that it will be less encouraged to grow super tall. Mainly, now it's kind of theoretical and a little bit odd, but... Um, you know, basically the theory is, is that the plant will learn as an, in a, in an established spot that it doesn't need to, um, reach up towards the top because it's got CO2, it's got the nutrients and it's got the lights. Those are the trifecta that you're really going for with your plants, uh, to make sure that they're doing well and that they are healthy and, uh, they're doing what you want. Now, um, essentially the plant will just start to adapt. Like the new generations will just be like, Hey, this is we're we're growing in a stagnant spot and stagnant sounds like a weird word there, but more of a static spot um, that the conditions aren't going to change that much, that they don't need to be constantly, you know, you know, aggressively like looking for one of the three things that they need to grow, you know, the nutrients, the lights. And whatever the other third thing was, I forget now. CO2. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Um, do, 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 uh, What do we got here? Full Moon Aquatics says, thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. I very much appreciate it. Uh, bought some Marimo and Easy Green with the link the other day. Fluffiest, darkest, greenest, healthiest Marimo I have ever gotten. Ooh, I like it. Um, Kathy Gesh says, I would love to join your community because I enjoy your chat so much, but I'm on Social Security. Ooh, no worries about that, Kathy. It's all good. We do have the free community on Facebook and YouTube. YouTube's free, too. I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, so thanks for showing up, Kathy. And like I said, uh, Dark Star Aquatics is the Facebook page, so it's super confusing. But... Um, Maybe someday I'll do the Dark Star Aquatics again. Maybe I'll do that website someday. I don't know. I'm considering it, whether I'm going to do it or not. It's Nature Man says, is there a way to adapt the CO2 Art Pro regulator to a manifold, or do I just have to get the Elite? I My best advice here would be to get the Elite. Um, I have a very similar CO2 regulator um, that is split, that is similar to that Pro, um, it's a different brand, but it's basically this, the same setup and I have it split past, uh, that, and it is very inconsistent. So, um, kind of difficult to, to build a thing that will do what the, um, CO2 art manifold additions does. Uh, I, I mean, you'd, you'd end up probably spending the same amount of money to make something that works as well. Uh, even if you were, you know, I, I say air quote DIY, you're basically assembling parts that you order. I think you'd be spending the same amount of money. All right, guys, we are coming up on the end of the show. It is Monday and I got to get rolling, you know, because I got these appointments. I got to stay busy. Oh, I got to stay busy. I'm always busy, constantly busy. And uh, hopefully I can, um, you know, maybe I can get you guys another video out. But it doesn't seem like a lot of people watched any of the other videos I put out over the weekend. So maybe I'll just leave those there for a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. Um, okay. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to come up on the end of the show. YouTube community tabs right there. Facebook groups is right there. Um, hopefully you guys all hit the join button. Uh, we didn't get any new members today uh but big shout out to the patreon of course and a big shout out to ringo star jason lafaver rumbust and ollie simmons thanks for the super chats today uh makes it a little bit easier to not worry about saying uh you know not, not getting demonetized right <laughs> Because of all the demonetization that's going on. Uh, but anyhow, thank you everybody for coming out. I'm, I very much appreciate it. Uh, hopefully everything goes well for you out there. And I hope to see you some more in the uh, the old internet verse here. Right? Yeah? Hopefully I see you all later.